Hey ladies, my name is Chanel and I'm a spiritual daughter to Pastor Joanne Danzo and Prophet Dr. Kofi Danzo. And we want to welcome you to Mama's, as I like to call her, YouTube channel. And for those of you who have been here before, of course, we want to welcome you back. Now today we're going to be talking about something that I know you have been wondering about. Have you ever come across someone that, you know, they might have said something like, uh, I heard from God, you know, or I had a vision about this, or I sensed God, or I felt God, and, and wondered to yourself, well, I believe in God, you know, I read my Bible, I go to church, but I'm not having the same things, like I'm not experiencing those things. You know, like how do I hear from God? How do I get visions? How do I sense God? How do I even know what God feels like? Or, or what voice is even His? I'm hearing so many voices in my head. How do I know which one is me? Which one is the Holy Spirit? Which one is God the Father? It can be really confusing at times. Um, so if you have been wondering those things, then you're gonna wanna stay tuned because this message is all about our spiritual senses and how to activate them. Let's take a look. And if you're ready, I think you're ready. I mean, I'm ready, so you must be ready. Okay, now let's talk Bible. The title of today's teaching and in this series is Activating Your Spiritual Senses. Okay? Activating Your Spiritual Senses or Tapping Into the Spiritual Realm. Okay? So, of course, you know that we have five senses in the natural, um, and those five senses are, as they go, the sense of touch, the sense of taste, the sense of smell, sense of hearing, and which one am I missing? The sense of sight, your vision, right? Touch, taste, smell, see, and hear, okay? Now, these are... Uh, senses that we use in our everyday life. It is our way of, of, of interpreting the world around us. It's our way of living, it's our way of breathing. It's how we operate and it's how we activate. Um, and you will find uh, if one sense is not working, another sense um, becomes heightened or stronger. So somebody who is blind has a very strong sense of smell. Right, or has a, rather a very strong sense of hearing um, because one of your senses are not working. Um, but I dare argue that the spirit realm is so much more important and carries far more greater weight than what we see right here in the natural. Okay, let's begin with um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 18. I believe that's a good place to start. While we do not look at the things uh -huh. which are seen, uh -huh. but at the things which, which are, are not seen. seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, uh -huh. but the things which are not seen are, are eternal. eternal. So the things in our physical world are temporary, amen? And the things in our spiritual world, the Bible says, are eternal. Okay, so everything that we are dealing with in the natural with our five senses, they are temporary. God does not work in terms of time. Everything that is sense bound in the physical with our five senses, they are based on time. They have an expiration date. You will, you will experience your five senses only so long as there is breath in your body. But there's an expiration date on these senses. But God does not work in terms of time. He works in terms of eternity. God steps out of eternity into time and he deals with man, but he lives in eternity. Okay? So everything that God deals with, he deals with in terms of eternity. So you have to take your time-bound way of thinking and expand it to God's eternal mind and eternal plan. Everything God does is in terms of eternity. Even if he speaks to you, if he touches you, if he heals you, he's working from eternity, okay? So our senses in the natural are temporary. Everybody say temporary. Our senses in the natural are temporary, but our spiritual senses are eternal, which means what we are activating in the flesh, we will be still using um, because it is our spirit body that's using them. So we will continue to use it in the afterlife, right? 
our spiritual senses, the ability to see, touch, taste, smell, hear. They are senses that we are not just using in the now, but we are using in the afterlife. So it's very important that we grow in those senses and that we, we begin to operate in those senses, okay? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 5, this is our chief text today, and it's what we're going to stick with for the next, I don't know how long. Hebrews chapter 5, and let's begin in verse 11, and then you will stop at verse 14. Amen. Of whom we have much to say mm -hmm. and hard to explain, uh -huh. since you have become dull of hearing. Everybody say dull of, dull of hearing. Okay. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not and solid And you have food. come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled, unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But, solid, but food solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Everybody say full age. Full age. Okay. That is those who by reason of use. By reason of use. By those who by reason of use. use. By reason of use. By reason of use. Okay. Have their senses exercise. To discern both good and evil. Okay. Solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to be able to discern both good and evil. Okay, so here we go. Heavenly Father, give me strength, give me blessing, give me words of wisdom that I may impart grace to those who hear it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the author of the book of Hebrews, we're not too sure who wrote the book of Hebrews, but the author of the book of Hebrews um, in the previous chapter has been explaining some very deep spiritual things of how Christ is greater than Moses and how Christ is greater than angels and how Christ is greater than Aaron and how Christ is greater than Joshua and how Christ is greater than Melchizedek. And then he stops in chapter 5 as he's explaining these deep spiritual things and he stops and if I pay paraphrase it what he says essentially is he says to the readers he says I have deep things to say but what I'm saying is too deep for you people and even though at this level you should be able to understand my deep words it's like I have to dumb it down for you people because at this level, you should not only be able to understand what I'm saying, but not only do you not understand what I'm saying, you should also be teachers of what I'm saying. But not only are you not teachers of what I'm saying, and you don't understand what I'm saying, you have to go again back to square one in order to understand even the basic principles of God. Even the basic, basic teaching of who Christ is and who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does, everything is back to square one with you people. So the writer, he took a pause in his deep teaching and in frustration he said, man, I got a lot to say, but it's beyond your level. And the reason I'm frustrated is because you people should know better by now. Okay? You people should have more knowledge by now. You people should have more understanding by now. But you're drinking milk. And instead of milk, you should be eating solid food. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? You know, Destiny is now in kindergarten and she comes home with homework, right? And right now she's learning how to trace her letters. You know? She comes home and I'll help her with her letters and you know, in order to help her, the, 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 the homework that they give her, you know, they, they, they put those dots so that she knows how to trace, you know. So when she comes and she sits at the table, I'm kind of guiding her. I'm like, okay, if you want to do an A, you have to kind of slant it like this, that's right. And then you slant it like this and then you go across like this. Now try it on your own, right? Why? Because she is a babe. Now, if Destiny came to me with that very same sheet at the age of 34, and she's asking me, how do I make, make an A, and how do I make a B, and I have to draw a line for her and say, okay, you slant it like this, I, I would be very frustrated, because I would say, at this level of the game, you should be farther along than where you are right now. You should be able to understand how to do what you're doing.
sleep and you're drinking milk, it's okay. But when you become mature or you're at a place where you should be mature, you become frustrated. You understand? So that's what the reader is trying to tell the people. He's trying to say, you know, at this point, I shouldn't have to go back to square one with you. At this point, I should be explaining deep, deep, deep things. But I have to go back to tracing. Okay, well, Jesus came in the book of John, and thus saith the Lord, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. He said, I'm frustrated that you cannot understand the, 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 the solid meat of the word, but you're still stuck on it. Everybody say milk is good. Milk is good when you're a baby. But when you get older, milk is no longer sufficient for your development. You get what I'm saying? Abigail um, is uh, for her, I think it was her five-month checkup. And um, you know, you know how they weigh the baby, they check the baby's height and everything. And so the doctor came in and he came in with this chart and he shows me this chart and he says, okay, Joanne, so this is Abigail's growth, right? And he said, um, this is where Abigail is in terms of her weight. And he said, and this is where a normal baby is at the age of five months in terms of weight. And he said to me, Abigail is in the first percentile which means she's only bigger than 1% of babies her age. I got really small. All my kids are very small babies, right? So he said she's only bigger than 1% of babies her age. And then he brought to me another chart. And he said, see, this chart is the chart from Abigail's last visit. And let's compare it to, her, to this visit. And he said, do you see how much she weighed in her last visit? And I said, yes. And he said, do you see how much she weighs in this visit? And I said, yes. And he said, do you see that her weight has almost plateaued? It, she hasn't really gained much weight. And I said, okay, I can see that. And he said, that is a direct indication that is no longer sufficient for Abigail. She, she needs food. She needs solid food. And you know the preacher in me, I said, that's deep. Okay? Because the thing that at one time was her sustenance and the thing that was causing her to grow in life is now the thing that is causing her to be deficient if she doesn't move on. Milk is good. Somebody say milk is good. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Milk is good, but milk is good for a baby. And if you've been a Christian for three years, four years, five years, it's time to get off the breast and get some meat. Ooh, that's good. You hear me? Because what happens in the church is Christians begin to plateau. You know, you get saved and you're running for God and you come to every prayer meeting and you're the first in line when the church doors open and you're hungry for God and you'll do anything. You witness in the street. You're in, you walk in holiness. Nobody can talk to you. No guy can approach you. Nobody can say, I love you. You're pure holy and you're on this spiritual run because you're drinking the milk and you're growing. But after a while, you become lazy. You become used to it. And then life, your Christian walk becomes mundane it just becomes a day to day to day to day walk and before you know it you've grown nowhere in two years and it shouldn't be like that because the Bible says that we should be going from glory to glory we should wake up every day and, and hear his mercies are new every morning. I should get a new revelation every day. I should get a new deposit in my spirit every single day. There's so much to know about God and we know so little in the church and we've become used to knowing nothing. So because we've become used to knowing nothing, we come and we depend on prophecy. We come and we depend on thus saith the Lord because we don't know God for ourselves in the church because we're stuck on milk. Oh God, oh God, oh God. That was amazing, right? I know, I know. And like, it's just that the way mama puts it across, the messages are so practical. I hope you had your phone and you were taking notes or a pad of paper or something like that. But I'll tell you what, I've got one better tip for you. Click the link below and you'll be able to access more teachings just like this one. You know, it, 
it's just, it's incredible. I, if you're anything like me, so many times we've been searching for answers and, and looking all over the place, but weren't really able to, to get anything. Listen, if you click that link, like I say, there's going to be so many resources available to you that are going to help you in your everyday life. So I want you to head over there now. But before you do, make sure that you subscribe to our channel. And on behalf of Mama, we want to thank you so much for watching. And see you next time. Bye for now.